last speaker is Petra Bokor from the University of Pech. Pech. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here, and thank you for all of you who came to listen to me uh, and stayed here where in the afternoon of the last day everybody must be tired. I am tired and I wonder how you can still fit any more information into your heads. It's, it's a really dense conference, so thank you. I would like to speak about a topic that has been touched upon during the conference, but only a little bit. It was touched upon in the personal development track, and uh, I think it's a, a very important um, aspect of the use of ayahuasca, and the topic is the integration of the experiences. Because from a psychotherapeutic point of view, most of us would probably agree that what goes on within the ayahuasca experience is only half of what is needed to achieve personality development or change. The other half is the work um, invested into incorporating the insights gained during the experiences into our everyday life, and this needs a lot of effort. This is what we call the integration. And the integration is important because the ego is a tricky creature. It can be very sly, and uh, it can make us believe that change has happened, whereas in reality, it has not. So during the integration, one needs to fight a number of things. Many times, doubt and fear, which are natural companions of change. But most of all, one needs to fight old habitual patterns of uh, affection, um, cognition and behavior, which are pulling the personality back towards reorganizing into its original state. There are very few researchers who have done scientific investigation into the topic of, uh, of the integration process, but two of them I would like to mention today are Susanna Bustos and Anya Loisa Gavelder, who are very inspiring. And in her dissertation, Anya draws on Asajoli and highlights that the integration process consists of two phases the assimilation and the implementation. Now, assimilation often begins during the ayahuasca session itself, and Ede Frechka coined the terms deconditioning and reintegration to the dynamics of the ayahuasca experience, referring with these two notions to the regressive cycle that we experience during the uh, ayahuasca sessions, during which, first of all, um, existing patterns of cognition, affection, and behavior dissolve, allowing the psyche to experience thus far unavailable and unknown emotional and cognitive uh, states, which then second result in the reintegration of the psyche to a higher level of, uh, of functioning. So drawing on these two notions, the deconditioning and the reintegration, the assimilation phase of the integration process can be conceived as the reintegration of the psyche to this more adaptive level of functioning once a deconditioning had successfully taken place. Reintegration, therefore, is the assimilation of, of the seeds of the new behavior patterns, of, let's say, the possibilities for these patterns. But as, as far as the assimilation goes, this is just a possibility. After this, when the session finishes and we go back to our everyday lives, we have to invest conscious effort into incorporating these, these insights and into stabilizing these changes. And this is what we call the implementation phase of the integration, is the manifestation of what had been assimilated uh, beforehand. The, inter, the, implement, uh, the implementation phase is therefore action-based. It needs a conscious effort, and it needs, it needs a person to, uh, in action, align what had been learned with our everyday behavior. <clears throat> and right now, we have very little knowledge about, uh, what, about the details of the integration phase. We don't really know what, what helps the integration process in details or what, uh, what hinders this process. Uh, and my, my investigation, my PhD dissertation, is really tries to, to focus on the integration, to find some hidden aspects of what, uh, what may help the integration. Because if we, can, if we can find any individual factors, or if we can find any contents in the experience that may help it, or, or on the other hand, hinder the integration process, I believe it would be a great help for, for psychotherapists working with uh, people participating in ayahuasca experiences, as well as maybe in the long run, in the long term, even 
um, provide a grant for developing psychotherapeutic tools for the integration. So certainly there are many individual factors that determine the outcome of an integration process, and maybe it's even impossible to map all of them. But let's just try to look uh, into this a little bit scientifically. So what I, what I did to make a first step into this huge topic uh, was that uh, I started thinking backwards and thought that uh, maybe if I, if, I compare, um, if I compare the data of those who succeeded with the integration of a theme they worked on with the help of ayahuasca uh, with those who didn't, um, who failed with the integration or at least didn't get to the end of the integration, that that could reveal some of these factors. So I took the data I collected in 2009 and 2010 from the one-year follow-up of 12 European adults who participated in two, three, four, or five ayahuasca sessions, um, rituals over the period of half a year and were followed for another half year during which follow-up uh, um, interviews were taken in group setting every six to eight weeks and then an individual interview took place at the end of the one year and, um, and I transcribed all this data, adding, uh, adding up all together to 88 pieces uh, of text. And this is what formed uh, the data of my analysis. Now, in order to, um, to determine who had integrated, who had succeeded with the integration of the theme they worked with, from those who didn't succeed with the integration, I handed out this data to three independent um, clinical psychologists who coded them for, th for tracking the therapeutic change. We define therapeutic change as the progress through four phases, which were problem definition and exploration to start with, insights as the second stage, the emergence of new behavior pattern for the third stage, and stabilization and integration for the fourth stage. And I must tell you, it was quite a bit of pain to work with clinical psychologists on this because none of the three independent psychologists had the previous knowledge about ayahuasca, but uh, given the peculiarity of the texts, of the transcription of the experiences, um, I decided to, to tell them about what they were coding. They were not blind coders and, and the codes in the end were pretty heterogeneous. In the end, they decided that uh, four of the 12 participants succeeded completely with the integration, and eight, eight of them did not reach complete integration by the end of the one year. So once we had these two groups, um, I used two content analysis softwares to, um, to analyze the uh, integration process. And one of, the, um, one of these two softwares was the Regression Imagery Dictionary, and the other one is a Hungarian <laughs> software called the Narrative Catalog. Now, the Regression Imagery Dictionary was, re was designed to measure primordial thinking versus conceptual thinking. And these two, um, these two terms originate back to Freud, but the idea of the two types of thinking appears in other branches of psychology as well. Conceptual thought is uh, abstract, it's logical, it's reality oriented and aimed at problem solving. And opposed to this, primordial thought is uh, associative, it's concrete, and it takes little account of reality. As regards to the therapeutic change, and, and especially in, um, in ayahuasca sessions, both of them are necessary, because primordial thinking is what, uh, what uh, dominates the regressive phases, and then later on conceptual thinking is, is uh, important, it's crucial for the reflection. Here you can see the subcategories of, of primordial thinking and conceptual thinking. They will be uh, important in the analysis later on. The second uh, software that we used, the Hungarian narrative catalog, is uh, draws on the tenant of narrating, si narrative psychology namely that uh, psychological meaning construction is linguistically founded. The narrative psychology recognizes the correspondences between psychological organization and narrative organization from the facts that narrative features, such as, for example, the temporal, uh, temporal characteristics of a story or the storyteller's perspectives of the story 
provide us with information about the uh, self-representations of the storyteller. Therefore, the narrative composition of self-narratives expresses the inner psychological conditions and features of the storytellers. So like other content analysis softwares, the NARCAD builds also, uh, is also built on dictionaries, but it goes beyond that using semantic role labeling and, uh, and some other submodules. And the, main, uh, 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 the most important part of the NARCAD is uh, the so-called psychothematic modules, which are agency, evaluation, emotion, cognition, spatiality, and temporality. They're all individual submodules and, and uh, have uh, their own structures. Here are just a few examples of them. I'm not going to go through all of them because it's uh, quite complex and I don't have time for that. But uh, altogether, the narrative catalog um, focuses on exploring the evaluation or the emotional and the cognitive processes of the self. And it also tries to explore complex principles of narrative composition. So let's see the modules. <coughs> this first graph represents, uh, shows the uh, correspondence analysis of the texts of the ayahuasca experiences. Uh, you can see zero at the bottom, which stands for non-integration, failed integration, or at least not ready integration, and one on the top, which stands for integration, successful integration. And, uh, and this is the uh, analysis we did with the regressive imagery dictionary. Unfortunately, it's in Hungarian, but I tell you what's most important from it, and that is that the distinctive categories that stand together with the integration are drive and moral imperative. Drive is a primordial subcategory of the read, and moral imperative is a secondary category. Now, on the other hand, uh, non-integration is marked by restraint and abstraction. Both of them are secondary categories. And why this is important is because, um, because uh, what it shows is it underpins the notion that, uh, that those who go deep into the regression during, uh, during uh, the session and those, as we will be able to see on, on the second, gra uh, uh, second graph, who then later are able to reflect over their experiences are the ones who are successful in the integration. So this is the correspondence graph for, uh, again, the regression imagery, regressive uh, imagery dictionary for the closing interviews. What it shows is uh, number one is there for non-integration and two here stands for integration. Um, Integration corresponds with, uh, with instrument and order, whereas non-integration corresponds with restraint and abstraction. All of these are secondary categories. So uh, from a, from, if you remember, in the previous graph, um, integration, was corres uh, integration corresponded with a primordial category. So what we can see here is that those who succeeded with the integration use primordial thinking and secondary thinking in a more distinctive way, whereas those who failed with the integration um, merged these two types of thinking along both the experiences and the follow-up texts. Okay. Now the narrative catalog, um, here's the correspondence graph for the narrative catalog analys uh, analysis. And what this shows us is, uh, again, zero here stands for non-integration, and one stands for integration. Okay. You can use the pointer if you want to see one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And what we see is that uh, integration, successful integration, corresponds with passivity, but not far from passivity, you can see also activity. And these two together form uh, the activity submodule of agency within the narrative catalog. So what we see here is that in successful integration corresponds with agency. It also corresponds with the positive emotion and I reference uh, in opposed to non-successful integration, which corresponds with negation and cognition. So summing up the result, the linguistic markers of successful integration were primordial thinking during the experiences, but then the dominance of conceptual thinking during the follow-ups, 
and the differentiated, uh, differentiated use of these two types of thinking. Contents reflecting moral imperative and uh, drive simultaneously during the ayahuasca experiences um, and the instrumental behavior and order during the follow-ups were the ones which predicted best the integration, the successful integration at the end of the one year. And the simultaneous use of activity, uh, positive emotions, and eye reference in all, in all of the texts, the experiences and the follow-ups together were the ones predicting successful integration. Now, the linguistic markers of failed integration, or at least not completed integration, among the participants were marked by less different, uh, differentiated use of the primordial and the conceptual thinking with the general dominance of conceptual thinking, secondary thinking, and content <coughs> reflecting restraints and abstractions simultaneously during the experiences and the simultaneous use of cognition and negation in all their texts. So what I would like to highlight from these results is, uh, is two things, that, uh, that integration was predicted from the experiences by, by the simultaneous presence of uh, content referring to drive and moral imperative together, because to me what this, this says is that if within the experience, one uh, experience is a moment where, where he or she can uh, truly feel what, what she wants, and at the same time, the moral imperative that knowing that what is right and what is wrong is together at the same time, that really helps the integration later on. And non-integration uh, was mostly experienced among those participants who who uh, still used abstraction during the experience and, and uh, conceptual thinking, so, which to me means that they did not surrender truly to their regression within the, integration, uh, within the experiences. So I would also like to highlight some of the limitations, and one of them is obviously that the sample was very low. This is just a pilot study. Uh, I only use 12, uh, texts of 12 participants, so in the future I, I would be happy to extend the sample size. Also, the sample was very special. Most of the participants were somehow related to, um, to psychology in their profession or some other mental health profession. They were, about half of them were spiritual practitioners, some of them were even um, involved in ongoing therapeutic word, work, and most of them somehow shared the spiritual worldview. So it was a unique sample after all. And also, it was uh, uh, to me, it was it was. Um, so I learned a lot about how to uh, how to work together with clinical psychologists who are not familiar in the world of ayahuasca. Uh, what I'm thinking about right now as the next step is to maybe give out the same text to other clinical psychologists and uh, mask them and say that these are texts of uh, hypnotherapy sessions and see if, if the outcome will be the same because, because that could also tell us a lot about uh, the biases that, that go on within um, our profession. Okay, and last but not least, I would like to say thanks to some of my colleagues, uh, Ede Frecska and Attila Szabó, who just entered the room. They're also part of the Hungarian Ethnobotany <laughs> and Ayahuasca research team. Um, in short, we call it the heart. <laughs> and I would also like to express my thanks to Tibor Poya from the National Academy of Sciences of uh, Hungary, who helped me a great deal with the statistics. He sent some of the results to me um, after midnight on, on the weekend, so without him I would have been lost in the world of numbers. Thank you.